Hello and welcome to Abnormal Mapping, episode 94. I'm your host, Em. With me is my regular co-host, Jackson. Hello. We're here to talk about Sonic Hedgehog. Sonic the Hedgehog. Sonic Hedgehog. Sonic Hedgehog. Shadow Hedgehog. Yeah. <laughs> Silver Hedgehog. Tails Hedgehog. Tails Hedgehog. Wait, that implies that Sonic and Tails are married. <laughs> Amy the Rose. <laughs> 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 Uh, this is a preview of the energy that this podcast will have. It's going to be a rowdy one. We played Sonic Adventure 2. Yeah, uh, Jackson, have you played any other video games? I've played a few hours of Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne. Oh, right. How's that? It seems great. Um, Can you explain to so, me why? Uh, well, the reason for me uh, is not very novel, So, because I'm only a few hours in, and so far... I really like the battle system and demon negotiations. I just think that the mechanics of Shin Megami Tensei are pretty cool. It's my first experience with those. That's okay. the reason I'm enjoying it so far. How does how does uh, combat work outside of demon negotiations? Like, what are your abilities? I mean, it's... So, you are just a, one character in your party, I think. Yes. Maybe you'll get other characters later, but I'm fairly sure. One, one character and then three slots of uh, demons. Demons, yes. Uh, I assume that's the Shin Megami Tensei no yes. I'm not really familiar with the main series. Yep, yep. Uh, but you build your party from that, and the demon negotiation is like, you know, you talk to them, or different demons have different talking negotiations, and they'll be like, the hey, thing, The thing I want to know here is if you have, like, gun and strike, like, other Shin Megami Tensei what? games as your commands. What What is gun? Like, in, in like, Shin Megami Tensei 4 and, like, Persona 1 and some of the other stuff, is your character has both a gun and, like, a weapon, and you can choose to, like, shoot or, like, attack. Like a there's only attack. There's no guns because it's in a demon world. You're oh, just, okay. uh, you are you're like a you know. There's just attack for me, and I can use abilities as well. Okay, so part of the Shimmer Tensei experience to me has always been you have a sword and an Uzi. <laughs> oh, well, alas, that is not represented here. Maybe I'll play four one day because I I like that part a lot. But like I've I've heard the game sold on big on the story being cool, and it seems fine. But you know, I'm not really into some of the the broader themes so far because uh, like someone will it's it's very kind of uh what's the word like restrained with the context it's given yeah, which the, the way the way i've always seen like screenshots shared it reminded me of like silent hill 2 like yeah in like there's long stretches where it's like just an rpg but then someone uh beautiful comes on screen and says something enigmatic <laughs> and disappears again yeah so there's lots of people saying enigmatic things and there was like oh you can remake the world that has fallen into chaos and build it anew or you can let this one die and oh I'm like, that's fine Shimagami or... tensei <laughs> <laughs> right yeah and i'm like that's fine but i don't know what this world is like you have to tell me what these themes mean and they're like we will not do that we will disappear someone will say oh there's lots of terrorism that means the world's in chaos and i'll be like ah the sure is Shimagami tensei luckily that doesn't really impact my moment to moment play of the game and i can just go through dungeons and enjoy chatting to demons yeah i think the like chatting to the demons is incredible i think the spaces have this amazing uh like weird feel of all the like um textures are very simple and the rooms are very empty and sparse it feels a bit like killer seven was a normal video game in many ways like it's of that of that group. I'd be really curious uh, so how you felt about Shimogami Tensei 4 if you end up ever playing that. I would love to play that one day because, um, I mean, you have a gun and a sword, so it sounds great to me. Yeah. Uh, but I've always heard this sold as a very incredible, like, just amazing experience because it's like, what if JRPGs were slightly more abstract and smart? And that side of it isn't clicking with me yet, and I expect not to just because of my proclivities when it comes to Shimogami Tensei. Uh, but I do like the battle system, and I do like the demon negotiation and moving through the spaces a lot. Uh, so I think I'm going to have a good time uh, regardless of what my big picture quibbles are, right? Like, mm. my first one of these, and it's pretty good. Okay. But that's my that's my thing for this month. Fair enough. Uh, I don't think I've played anything other than Mario Maker 2, which I think I talked about last time we did one of these? Almost certainly. Video games, they, they take Has that been out for a soul. month? I have. I don't... Time has been... I've been sick this month. If you don't follow any of our other content, if you only listen to this podcast... That's been out for one, a month. One, I apologize. <laughs> and two, I was sick this entire month, so I didn't get a whole lot done, game-wise. Yep. I really need to finish Outer Wilds before the year ends. That's the actual thing I need to do. Oh, right. Yeah, shit. I did that as well, because... That's going to be on everyone's goodie list. Yep. And uh, I really need to have enough games to put together a goodie list also. <laughs> no goodie list this year. We're canceling the Top list. fives. 
Yeah. Top five it's is just bottom list three, different... and it's just what we played for this podcast. <laughs> it's just what we played for this podcast, and my top... In fact, my top list and bottom list is one continuous list, and it's just Kingdom Hearts games. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> uh, God. Um, but that's that. Uh, should we get into it? Should we get into what we came here to do? Yeah, and that's to talk about a Supersonic... Uh, is it Super Shadow? What's Shadow thing? Hyper Who cares? Shadow. Sonic- Hyper Shadow. Hyper Sh- I fucking love this game. It <laughs> sucks. It's terrible. Okay. I love it so much. This is Knuckles, and I'm back. I've been away for a while, but I'm back to kick some butt in Wild Candy. I shall find all the lost pieces of the Master Emerald here. I'm going to get those fools. They want to play with my emeralds. They play with the wrong guy. That guy don't know. Adventure 2 is a game developed by Sonic Team USA for the Dreamcast in 2001, for the GameCube in North America in 2002, and then it came out on the modern-ish consoles last generation in 2012. Um, Directed by uh, Takashi uh, Izuka, produced by Yuji Naka. It is the sequel to Sonic Adventure, a game that we're probably not going to spend too much time talking about because I don't like it very much. Uh, This game, however, is incredible. I played this when it came out on GameCube. It was the first Sonic game I'd ever purchased. Uh, Not the first one I ever played, but the first one I ever played to completion. Um, In it, you are Sonic in the human world, as the adventure games do, and you are trying to deal with the uh, appearance of a mysterious black hedgehog named Shadow and the chaos he has caused. Uh, <laughs> pun unintended. Fuck you. Uh, by running afoul of the government because the the, the, CIA, the fake CIA is after you now, <laughs> and they have mechs the and they're States called government. Gun G U N. It's good. We're saying it, it's good. Yeah. Um. I don't even know how to begin to talk about this game because I've loved it since I first played it. Uh, Dex, why don't you talk about your experience with Sonic and Sonic Adventure Two? Yeah, so I'll, I'll go to my Sonic content, which is a little different. I played uh, Sonic Heroes as a kid. That was the Sonic game I had, and I liked it quite a lot. Um, but I never got another Sonic game until uh, I think quite a long time. I think because I, I think I got just subsumed into listening to so many podcasts and reading enough gaming stuff that I just assumed Sonic was bad and all Sonic fans were idiots for a while. Yeah, um, as you do. Uh, when you're, uh, you know, 12 and don't think about things, but assume the people you're reading are very smart. Yes. Um, and then later would uh, would get back into Sonic uh, through playing Generations. Mm-hmm. Um, and through, I went back and played the old 2D games. This is in the podcasting like, era. Yes, this is, in the pod, this is all in the podcasting era. Like, I yes. played I played Generations, uh, and I've, I've played uh, the uh, original 2D games, like 1, 2, 3, and CD. Uh, 2 and CD are my favorites. I don't particularly like 2D Sonic. So, yeah, I'm not big in Sonic. I, I like I like Sonic. I like Advance and I like Rush, but I didn't. I don't like Genesis era Sonic that much. You know what they have the uh, other Sonic does not grinding. I guess ridiculous Rush, music. Uh, the music. I was gonna say the homing attack. Ah, uh, that's I consider like the 
the core of Sonic, which it isn't if you were if you're old. Uh, but if you came to Sonic in 3D, the homing attack is Sonic. I love when they put the homing attack back in 2D Sonic. Yes, uh, that's my favorite thing. Um, but yeah, so I've played Generations and I've played uh, Forces, played Lost World, which is a different thing, but I, I like and wish was good. <laughs> yeah, I think the only Sonic that's game a- I have not played. No, two games I've not, not played. played Heroes. Three Heroes, O Six, and Unleashed. And I've watched a long. I've watched most of O uh, Six and Unleashed at this point in like YouTube form. Yeah, I, I want to play Unleashed because it's the clearly the beginning of like the it's the first boost game, right? And it's, yeah. there's a lot of where, generally accepted where they came to understand how to like make Sonic sustainable before Sonic Team decided to just not let them do that anymore. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately, the other answer was to make half the game bad God of War combat. So you know, yeah. we'll see if I go back to Unleashed at any point. Yeah. Uh, I will probably never play 06, even for curiosity's sake, because that's a waste of my time. Yeah. Which is a shame, because it seems like the most inspired by this game, but also it seems but like... also terrible. Yeah, a barely held together disaster game. Which, uh, compared, <laughs> if you if you can go further down the hole of barely held together disaster game than Sonic Adventure 2, I, commendable, <laughs> because sometimes this game... And part of this is we played this game on PC, which is a not great port. But even at the time, there's like a weirdness around a lot of the design of this game that uh, it's it's just so singular. And that can be singular in a great way. That can be singular in a, wow, they really just made this thing, huh, way. Depending so on let's who talk you about are. how it's singular in a great way, which is the very opening cutscene. You press start on the game, and you press play, and it's like, over the city, timestamp, no context, Sonic the Hedgehog bursts out of a plane. A cop and plane where he beats up some a cops. Cop plane. He beats up some cops, bursts out of a cop plane, handcuffed, broken on his arm, and surfboards down the streets of San Francisco. Yes. Uh can you come out of the gate stronger than that? I think not. Uh, you, you know, it's hard. I can think of maybe one or two things I would say does that, but yeah, not very many. Follow me, set me free, trust in me, and we'll escape from the city. Yeah, one of them is Bayonetta, so Sega just knows how to do this. <laughs> Sega knows what's up. <laughs> yeah. Uh... But yeah, and and it's just very uncanny and strange because all the cutscenes have that quality. And like one of the best cuts in the history of ever is uh Sonic goes to the president's limo and is like, We'll handle this, Mr. President. And the president's like, please save us, Sonic. Hard cut. Sonic and friends are standing uh next to a pyramid. We can use this to get to outer space. Yes. <laughs> like, what? Yeah. What are you talking about, Sonic? And in general, there's a uh, like weird machinima quality to a lot of yes. the cutscenes where they go on like too long and they're not like framed well or like cut the way you would any thing that isn't just putting a camera in your 3D environment as you have models like you know animate in ways they probably weren't meant to. Uh, and like everyone gesticulates wildly and has these very strange poses that are like uh just over like animated but not by like traditional animators so they just seem weird. Um. And it just gives it all, like, this very, like, uh, like, amateur is the right word. Like, these are people who know how to make videos. The the internet has taken this aesthetic and run with it so far that it ends up feeling like a precursor to, like, internet culture in a huge way to me. Well, it's kind of like looking at a weird 90s PC thing and going, oh, this is just like Vaporwave, right? Like, this is a, this is a, this is a a ground zero for a whole section of culture in a lot of ways. Yes. Uh, Like, the bit where uh, Tails goes... Uh, how did you know that was a fake head, a fake, fake emerald? And Eggman responds, "Because you just told me." And then it zooms in on <laughs> Tails' face. Going, yes. <laughs> is first off just hilarious, just one of the funniest things that's ever happened. And second off, I see that on like I see that in every joke on Twitter, like yes. in every video joke ever. It's the whole. It's right there. It's yeah. in Sonic Adventure Two. Battle. <laughs> Battle. <laughs> PC port. Yes. <laughs> For Windows PC. God. Uh, so should we talk about the mechanics part? Because I feel like that's yeah. the part we're going to be down on the most, so we might as well get out of the way. Even though I would so, I would posit that this game is mostly really good, despite being janky as shit. I would posit that parts of this game made me want to end my life. <laughs> so uh, the way the, the gimmick with this game is you have two storylines. You have the hero storyline and the dark storyline. Um, 
in which you, the hero you're playing is Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles, and then the dark you're playing is Shadow, Dr. Eggman, and new character Ruse the Bat, uh, who's a treasure hunter who's cool. Um, there's a horn that just went off. <laughs> uh, I'm sure that picked up. Uh, anyway, um, and they have basically mirrored mechanics as they go through levels. In fact, the levels are often skinned the same, but slightly different also. Yes. Um, and so you have Sonic who plays like Sonic Adventure, you know, going through fast stages, uh, where, you know, you run from one into the other, you do a lot of grinding on rails, you home attack enemies to get across gaps, uh, you collect rings, I guess, still, but not really. Not in the same way. Not really. No. They only are there to keep you alive. You collect at least one ring (laughs) at all times. Uh, and then you have Tails and Eggman, which are, like... You're in slow mechs that can fire weapons as you, like, platform and go through, like, an enemy gauntlet. Um, in, I don't even know what I would describe this as. It kind of reminds me of, like, Sin and Punishment, but you control the character, which Sin and Punishment's yeah. on rails. Um, I was gonna, I was gonna say, like, what if, uh, what if you had manual control of, like, and, a shooting but gallery? But also were walking and yeah. it was Afterburner. Yeah. 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 Afterburner is uh, a good choice, also. And then, because it's the, the, like, highlight everything and then let go and then you fire brilliant missiles. Yes. And then, uh, Knuckles and Rouge have levels where you're going through spaces trying to collect shards of the master emerald that has been shattered because uh, of story. And, and you have to use like a radar to collect the pieces that are randomly scattered throughout the environments, usually by digging for them underground. It's maybe the worst video game ever made. <laughs> uh, the Knuckles and Ruse levels are notoriously like fiddly and confusing. Um, Evil is the word. Uh, especially since you can't just look up where the shards are because they're randomly placed. Uh, and sometimes it's just like, I know I'm at the right place, but I'm not digging on the right pixel to dig up the shard. Nope. Um, and because of the randomness, there was like, tw- well, there was one time where I got all of them in two minutes, and I was like, "This is the best feeling in the universe." Yes, because they just happened to all be placed near my starting location, and I just went like the radar would always ping. But sometimes you could be going for like ten minutes, just running around the whole environment and just not even getting a ping, so you didn't even know where to even start looking. Yeah, because I played this game when I was sixteen, back when I would play games over and over again before the podcasting. Um. I, I my brain just kind of remembered the general locations of where likely emeralds were so uh like multiple versions of this level I would clear in like three or four minutes uh sometimes I think the longest one took me eight <laughs> which is oh. ludicrous compared to you I was up to 45 and like sometimes you, you'd spend 20 minutes on a level but you'd have died a few times and then you'd run out of lives and then the, the locations would reset and you'd be back where you started uh hell hell uh yeah that's true i do i do like all of the like uh like rapping that gets in the knuckles levels i think it's all pretty good oh yeah that's that's good fun he's the fighting freak knuckles all cannot be overstated Uh, the soundtrack of this game is one of the greatest soundtracks in a video game Um, yeah live and learn yeah, multiple selections here. What doesn't get thrown in here will probably be on our end of the year music episode because I don't know. How <laughs> we don't have anything else to choose from. <laughs> well, that's not true, but um, it's good. It's good. I keep waiting for the uh, z- z- vinyl of the soundtrack to come back in stock, and it has not because I this is one I definitely want to. It's a shame. Oh, was that on Fan Gamer to point? Yeah. Um, I th- I think it was done by someone who doesn't do the normal stuff because they're usually pretty good about republishing those, but that one hasn't come in stock since I started tracking this sort of thing. The people, the people want Sonic Adventure two music, yeah. please. You can get Sonic Adventure one, but that's not half as good. Especially not soundtrack wise. Like yeah. it's fine, but no, it's not what you want. So yeah, uh, the shadow, the, uh, the knuckles and rouge levels are bad. I understand. I think they're fine just because I remember how to do them. Uh, oh so yeah. <laughs> if you can do them in a couple minutes, they're fine. They're you know whatever, but. Uh, they are they are categorically the worst part of this game, unquestionably. And then you have uh, my will to live. Then you have Tails and Eggman in their slow mechs, which uh, is weird because like I don't think they're good levels, but the ways in which it builds like you just run through these levels and mow down guys makes you feel incredibly powerful in a way that's kind of fun. They're nice breaks from running fast. Yeah, I think they're okay in terms of the game's like platform, like the ch- the challenge that is not hell. Uh, comes from the Sonic levels, right? Yes. Like there's uh, some platforming stuff, and luckily the um, 
Eggman and uh, Tails levels are mostly fairly easy, so long as you at least go at a slow enough pace. Mm-hmm. Uh, like if you rush it, you'll you might get hit too much, but if, if if you're going at a measured pace, you'll get everyone you need. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and so that ends up being okay. The problem is um, that every single one of the levels is like twice as long as it needs to be. Yes, and also it asks you to do platforming with like the worst perspective ever because the camera in this game is bad throughout, no matter who you're playing as. But Sonic yeah, the and Shadow terrible. at least are usually on rails during the most dramatic parts. But there are moments where you'll try to line up a jump, but it'll be in the middle of like a um, what's the what's the word like like a, a perspective change bit. Yeah. So there's one jump. Okay, there's one jump that I made, and I felt like a king for making it. Um. And it's not a joke. It's not a jump you are meant to make. Uh, as I go, so there's a. It's in one of the last levels with the with the rails in space. Yes. Oh, uh, did you do the thing where you fell all the way down and landed on the rail like half yeah! the level? Yes, it's very cool. Also, one time I did that accidentally. I missed a jump and then landed on the rail below. Yes. Best feeling in the universe. Yeah. But one the- time I just jump far right and land it again <laughs> yeah the sonic and shadow levels especially towards the end where you get these big space levels just have incredible skips that you can do if you know what you're doing oh they're amazing i, I love that stuff so much i yes. think like as much as a lot of the game was just like bashing my head against the wall because the the, the knuckles and uh, rouge levels like just come wore down my spirit and it's not like the sonic levels are enjoyable all the time like they're the best parts of the game but they can get very frustrating especially with the design of like once you run out of four lives you gotta start again and they're so long yes uh if, if there were just checkpoints and no lives i think that would go a long way uh, yeah to um mitigating my frustration in a big way uh but <laughs> when you get to the end and you just get these huge vistas of rails and space and everything's exploding it's everything that you by you i mean the hypothetical 13 year old playing i guess real 16 year old you playing sonic adventure 2 once from video games it's video games they're happening and they're exploding Uh, in space on rails yeah it's one the uh the like last sonic and shadow levels of their arcs where you're just in space are two of my favorite levels in video games ever (laughs) so Uh, yeah i think the sonic one's better but only because i think that the mechanic and the shadow one of the weird uh spiraling up like the towers that change the gravity yes uh isn't great um but here's the thing i want to mention is that a lot of these so in the the uh attempt to make sonic work in 3d a lot of these levels have like one off mechanics tied to them like this is the level where you x um and I think it's interesting because the, the attempts to make that work in some is much more successful than in others. Um, uh, I, I in think... what way? Like, which ones? Oh, I'm trying to think of specifics now because the whole game's a blur in my head. But, like, it starts off in just doing regular jumping, right? And then by the end, you've got, like, those weird, uh, like, eventually you get rails and then you get the weird towers and stuff. And, it like, you know, you'll get um, yep. the levels in the... Uh, like the, the slow introduction in the um tail stuff where you get like uh here we're blowing stuff up and now we're doing doors and now doors need these triggers and now you've got yep. uh things sending you into space uh like you can see the mechanical evolution here and it's pretty it's pretty interesting but it's definitely like kind of haphazard it doesn't form a it's not like a very linear polished like this is the progression of mario ideas right yes no the one i really dislike is the sonic uh hourglass timers in the pyramid level i think they're that's bad. the one i would that's yes. That's the one I was thinking of. Was yeah. like, there's one I wanted to mention. The yes, one that's cool that. is the giant tree island where Sonic's grabbing the like vines and being swung around. That one's great. I died at the end of that level about ten times because there's a, it ends with a oh, oh the, the thing where the floor is falling off under you, you and you have to find the right thing to bounce yes. on. Yes. And the auto targeting breaks. Yes. Well, the arg- the auto targeting is not as good as it uh, will eventually be when they put giant reticles over the thing you're targeting at. <laughs> Uh, yep. You just kind of have to hope that you're lined up right, or the game realizes that you're trying to bounce on something. Yep. Because uh, yeah, I, I mean, this isn't this game, but I do think of like Sonic's uh, mechanical aspirations as being very interesting when compared to like a Mario. It's very polished. Because uh, Sonic Lost World, right, is a game that is the most this. It's them taking on like we're gonna do interesting mechanical variations on jumping, and that's what the game's gonna be. And it's just kind of all scattered all over the place. Like, here's the one with fruit. Here's where you're a snowball. Uh, and when you get to that game, 
and this game has a similar quality of just here's some ideas there's no progression to them and on some level like that's frustrating but on some level i i I wouldn't want this to be the sanded off everything's perfectly mechanically you know lined up and would get a a very approving game makers toolkit video about it. I don't want Sonic to become Mario. <laughs> the thing, right, the like, thing that I think of is like carrying us forward is there's this incredible level near the end of Sonic Forces where he, Sonic is running through a town as Infinite, the fake shadow villain, is like basically chaos controlling Sonic into like envisioning yes. gravity changing, which is just this because it's it, all you're really doing is holding forward and hoping you don't die as the level does crazy shit around you, and it's fantastic. Yeah, Sonic Forces is a good game. Yeah, Sonic Fo- uh, the, uh, most of the reason I like Sonic Forces is because it reminds me so much of Sonic Adventure 2. Oh, uh, yes, yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, and yes, people are right. You mostly just hold forward as nothing happens in the game. Correct. It's cool Fair as criticism. hell. It's cool as hell. You press X and fist bump plays. And it's super, it's super earnest about its like outrageous story. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, do we want to pivot to talking about the story now? If you have nothing else mechanically to say, I will say that giving Sonic the, like, bounce is the worst thing they ever did to Sonic. It sucks so much. Oh, it's so slow. Yeah. It's so slow. It just slows you down to do the bam, 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 bam. And I get why you would think that's an interesting mechanical thing to give to Sonic yeah. in bull form. Also, but, the, like, <sighs> the, the like rolling somersault is not nearly as good as the spin dash, which he doesn't get again for a while. Like, yep. there is no spin dash in this Sonic. It's weird. It's strange, but it, it, but like you know, the the thing that you need is there, which is the two the two hallmarks of this era of Sonic, which are the homing attack and the light dash, and grinding uh, on rails, and, and grinding on some fucking rails. Yes, uh, which is what you need. The shadows, but, uh, shadows, extremely just built in the year two thousand one to grind on rails. Shoes are my favorite design. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Shadow the Hedgehog. Yeah, uh, but I. I any time in Sonic that there is a large, uh, large pit that you don't want to fall into, and a bunch of enemies over the pit that you have to chain homing attacks to, that's really what I want from video games. Or on some an ext- level. or like a extremely obvious line of rings. That's the actual <laughs> yeah. best one. <laughs> that too. And, and when they start getting into like just the extreme version of that, as you're riding a line of rings across like a space station exterior. Yes. Uh, that's all I want. That's what I've been asking for this whole time from video games. Yep. Yeah. That stuff's all really good. Uh, I generally like the the grinding rails. I think it's a cooler idea for Sonic than, like, the spin attack. Just because the ways in which it lets you mm. shortcut areas of the levels. And I know that the original Dreamcast version had it where you had to bounce on the rails. But you don't have to do that. So you can just crouch and go fast or not go fast. And then the ways in which you can fling yourself off into doing tricks. Uh, it doesn't get you anything. Uh, in Sonic uh, Advance, which are the versions of these, give you points based on that. But... Man, I should I should play some Sonic Advance. Yes, Sonic Advance is just the two D version of this, but it's all about like, like one button ollie ollie off of rails and uh, zip lines and stuff. Yeah, because I remember playing Rush, and Rush is just a load of rails that go across two screens. Yes, it's like all that game is. Yeah, uh, that stuff's all really good. Um, the final mechanical thing I want to mention is um, in the final story when you have a level that is everyone teaming up. Yes, uh, that's great. That's that's very good. That it is where the like the the character all, all the separate characters come together in a much better way than they did in Adventure One. Except for the part where that level is fucking hard as shit. <laughs> oh, it's impossible. It's fucking impossible. Uh, but it's it's cool enough that it got me through, and I'm yes. like, yeah, hell yeah. But oh my god, it's too hard, and they there needs to be checkpoints. Please stop putting lives in games. I guess they did over the last twenty years. They have stopped. Yeah. Also, all the bosses are bad in this game, uh, except for the they, final one. Uh, the bosses are bad. Yeah. Because um, it, it, it follows the Mario line of you know wait for the boss to expose their weakness, then get it. But because Sega don't know, you have to hit every boss like six times instead of three, and usually you have to like goad them into like there's one that's really terrible. It's a giant ghost that you just have to goad into doing its attack animation so you can get to its weak point. So just you waiting for it to be in the exact right position to line it up, and it it's just tedious. It's just so tedious. <laughs> It's really tedious. And, like, the final battle that you have in both paths of Sonic versus Shadow, uh, where you have to, like, fight your other person, but because it's just running fast and the one homing attack that you both have, you just end up bouncing off each other all the time. It's very bad. 
No, if I if I was going to decide that now, right, I would like make that kind of not a quick time event, but it would be who can do the first timing attack. Yeah, it just be it just be like a race, like it's like the Metal Sonic levels, right? Like that's the good version yeah, of yeah. this. Yeah, some kind of hedgehog off, and what they do is run fast. Yep. Or uh, uh, Rick Dom glide on your rocket boots fast, like Shadow does. Yeah, which is cool yeah. as shit. <laughs> The year 2001 is here. You know who's cool? Shadow the Hedgehog. <laughs> Shadow the Hedgehog is cool. I'm glad we've all just come around to agree that Shadow the Hedgehog is cool as hell. Yep. Um, uh, we might no, as well no pivot irony. to the story stuff, which is where the real interest lies. Yes, it is. Dr. Gerald Robotnik. <laughs> Dr. Gerald Robotnik. Uh, there's a scene in this game wherein a space colony reveals itself and... The, the the feeble human masses look to the sky as a beam of light shoots out across them and they helplessly watch as it destroys half the moon. <laughs> yeah, it just fucks up the moon. <laughs> and everyone's like, my god. And it's not like... It's not doing that as a joke. The no. reason this game is good and like and funny, like it wouldn't be funny if it was doing it on purpose. It's kind of like there's a whole culture of like there's the, these fan dubs of these games that have got big and people making jokes about it. And the problem is you you can't do that to something that's already amazing and funny. Like it's already yeah. over the top and stupid. Also, though those scenes always happen in incredibly compressed like yeah. CG cutscenes where the humans look like monsters. I'll have you note, uh, Final Fantasy, all the places Final Fantasies are out at this point. Like, people know how to make CG humans that look good, but Sega does not know. <laughs> everyone looks it's like a thousand, na- Everyone looks like uh, Andy Toy Story from the first movie. <laughs> oh, God. They really do, don't they? <laughs> yes. Ooh, nightmare. Including, in the montage at the very end of the game, some very racist depictions of, like, Muslims praying because Sonic and Shadow <laughs> saved the day. Yep. This came out the same year as Final Fantasy X. Yes. Yes, imagine. Like, I understand why people were maybe not super hot on this game at the time. They're wrong. It's great. But when you put the two right next to each other, and if you're just, like, reviewing games like a person who does that as a living, yeah, of course you look at Sonic Adventure 2 and go, what the fuck is this garbage? What the fuck is this garbage? And the answer is it's beautiful. Yes. Because uh, it's, on some level, it's just every video game. Yeah. Yep. They just they just put Sonic in like the er plot, and it because you know Sonic and his friends because they're people you mostly know. It's great to see them go through that. Like the enjoyment of just characters bouncing off each other. Like Amy Rose does nothing other than tag along because she's Amy Rose and she's great. Um, gets captured in a jump that you don't see until you play the other path. You're like, how did Amy <laughs> get captured? She's not even how in this Amy story. Get the the ways that the other path does explain the gaps but makes it a lot more confusing in different ways is very yes, funny. Yes. The part where Tails has to go chase down the president's limo and you just have a cart race for no good reason. But you don't realize you're chasing down the president's limo until you reach the goal and it's the president's limo. It just says yes. cart race. Yeah. <laughs> and it's Check you're not racing time. anyone, you're just driving and there's a timer, I guess. Yeah, and then eventually you catch up to the president's limo, and then there's a cutscene where Sonic the Hedgehog jumps into the president's limo! Yeah. <laughs> Mr. President. <laughs> I mean, it's the president! Uh, and Eggman's like, you will join the Eggman Empire! And Sonic's like, not today! No. I'm Sonic the Hedgehog! So yeah, the plot is... Uh, this, uh, Eggman's grandfather, uh, Dr. Gerald Robotnik... Um, <laughs> Has uh, was once tasked by the military to create the ultimate life form, and I guess he did that. But then the military like killed, like captured him and killed all the researchers, including his granddaughter Maria, um, and sealed up the ultimate life form. Who Eggman breaks out because he receives a tip, and it turns out that the ultimate life form is Shadow the Hedgehog, who's like Sonic but evil. Um, and he's like, I got a good trick for you. If you gather the Chaos Emeralds, we could take over the world. And he's like, well, I do that every time anyway, and it fails, but I guess we could try it again. <laughs> yes. Uh, and meanwhile, in gathering all the Chaos Emeralds for Shadow, uh, Shadow runs across Sonic, uh, who Sonic realizes the military is after him because they think he's Shadow, even though they look nothing alike other than being hedgehogs. Uh, and also the treasure hunter Rouge, who's collecting emeralds because she likes shiny things, uh, gets a gem destroyed by Eggman and decides that she's going to see what Eggman's about. If he's collecting emeralds, it'll get her to more jewels. So yep. she joins Team Dark inexplicably. 
Just because we have two teams here. Yes, we have two teams here. And one's taken. Yes. Gone. Um, and so, uh, you know, everyone, heroes team up, try to save the world, bad guys try to destroy it, and then everyone goes to space where they discover that uh, Shadow knew uh, Gerald Robotnik's granddaughter Maria was in love with her. She asked him to, like, learn to love humanity, even though they created him to be a weapon, and he has to team up with Sonic to defeat the real threat, which is the Space Station Harbors, the Bio-Lizard, the actual prototype of the ultimate life form. I don't know how you get from giant dinosaur to Shadow the Hedgehog, but they did. <laughs> but, like, so, but, like, Shadow's remembering being told to love by this dead woman yes as he's like they created me to kill and the, you know the metal gear theme plays in my head <laughs> like it's just that yes also dr eggman does the weird thing that happens in 3d sonic games where he's like genuinely evil and has a plan to eradicate all of humanity <laughs> and then teams up with the heroes like three minutes later when that plan is actually going to backfire on him instead <laughs> Yeah, so the justification for him teaming up with everyone at the end is that his granddad's evil plan gets activated, but he doesn't seem to disagree with it, because like, he says, uh, if, oh, if I knew about this, I'd have done this ages ago. Anyway, we need to stop this now. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> like, what? What's going on here? He's got to uh, be the one to destroy humanity, not his grandfather. Not his fucking granddad. So let's stop this and let's 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 save the day and stop the space colony from falling to Earth. And they do through Sonic and Shadow teaming up with the power of the Chaos Emeralds to defeat the giant Chaos dinosaur Control. merged into the space station, trying to crash it into the planet. Video games are good. Listen to that sentence. Yes. <laughs> yep. And then Shadow Fake dies to show up in every 3D Sonic game after this till the end of time. Ever till the end of time. Yes. <laughs> Well, I, I guess it's only maybe no will never happen again. Yeah. They, they say they're working on one, but who can? Who the can part be sure? where Shadow and Rue just immediately got subsumed into the Sonic fandom, despite this game being like, I, I feel like a breaking point for a lot of people. Sonic is very good to me because I like both these characters a lot. I mean, Silver's in the Shadow in the Sonic the Hedgehog fandom. That's like, true. They don't really ignore anyone. You know, um, what if Shadow the Hedgehog like had fun. psychic powers instead? Not as good. Yeah, yeah. So this game was like, ah. Oh, it makes me kind of like I I love this kind of ridiculous story. This very deeply earnest but deeply stupid story that is just the purest form of video games on some level. Yes. Like I understand thinking this is garbage, but I also think that if you can't enjoy this, then you know if you don't deserve me at my Sonic Adventure two, uh, you don't you don't get me at my uh, you know pick any video game ever. Right, King, like uh, Kingdom Hearts, Final Metal Fantasy Gear. ten, Kingdom Final Hearts, Hearts all 10. of Kingdom Hearts. They're all. all every, I mean, every Kingdom Hearts. This is the most Kingdom Hearts game. There's even a line where she's like, Shadow, you must remember the human's heart. Yes. <laughs> and... uh, one of the, cre- the... Because of the level, the it's like hero story, you, uh, dark story, and then the final story. When you beat... Because everyone plays hero story first, you get like this amazing like ad for dark story, which is just like, <laughs> all hail the Eggman Empire. And it's just Eggman and Shadow doing cool, evil shit. And how cool it is to be the bad guys. And then when you beat that... And unlock the final story you get literally like kingdom hearts uh like the end of every kingdom hearts trailer for the next one where it just enigmatically throws phrases at the screen including one that's just supersonic (laughs) (laughs) it is the most kingdom hearts thing that's ever existed yes it's so good yeah like just again the purest form of video games so i can't not adore it on some level uh yeah it's it's amazing (laughs) I can't and believe so, that this is like those are the trailers for the game that is like the weird machinima, like right. <laughs> Sonic and his friends. Like, what if a sprite comic was a YouTube video? <laughs> and so it makes me kind of go. Like, uh, one of the things that's kind of a bummer about Modern Sonic, apart from the fact that it's all bad and none of it exists. Yeah, the, yeah, the part where none anybody. of it exists is actually the worst part. Uh, but like Modern Sonic, as in you know when they were still making it fairly regularly. Uh, is it also kind of kind of like a kids show tone uh, of knowing self parody so that it was welcoming to the adults who didn't think that this was like who they knew you knew it was stupid and then was welcoming to the kids because it was just, just fun times whatever like Sonic's here taking a picnic uh, and that's fine like they're not against that but I do like they just they weren't trying to do a joke about this kind of story they just wanted to put so they genuinely think Shadow the Hedgehog is the coolest thing in the world there's no wink and nod here that's because uh, it is. And knowing that they did eventually try what if we did this again and it blew up in their face and made something that everyone hates. 
uh, is a real shame because, I, like I said, never played 06, probably never will, uh, but it seems awful, even though it's the thing that I would say that I want. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, forces exist. You like forces. I like forces. Like forces is a little more like geared towards the like like kid set because of the like the create the OC and stuff. But I think it generally has this stuff. Like, oh, it, yeah. remember Eggman in that is like literally going around killing people. Like, it's not like it shines away from being super earnest. Yeah, no, like the that forces is the a turn towards this. I wish they had the money to have finished it or made it ever. Yes. Um, but it absolutely is this, because, like, you know, Generations is, like, Eggman joking with a different version of himself. Yes. Uh, and everyone gets sucked away from a birthday picnic, and it's just very silly. Uh, which is fine, I'm not against that kind of storytelling, but um, Forces is... <laughs> everyone oh. stands on the moon in a battle for all of reality. The ways in which Generations... The, kind of I'm here for. the way in which Generations is, like, a greatest hits of Sonic, I feel like when you get to the adventure era, it starts to break down where you're seeing new 3d versions of 3d levels you already love like it's like what, yes. are we, what are we doing here at this point it's 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 weird because generations is the best 3d sonic game in terms of it like completeness of levels and feel like it is the most the, the most good one yes right? but it's also frustratingly limited it's just the greatest hits collection uh it doesn't push anything forward like it felt like oh now they've done this they can rake the real sonic games and then they didn't no they cannot <laughs> They could not. They were forbidden. Alas. Yeah. Sonic's it's in a weird place, which is a shame, because this game, I loved it at the time. I love it now. I, Despite all of its obvious faults, I think it's a genuinely fun game to play. Oh, um, uh, yeah. I mean, I think running through the Sonic levels is great. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it's not, like, excessively long, either, unless you get really hung up on the Knuckles and Rouge levels. Which I did. Yeah. I think yeah. even my playtime wasn't like the extreme, but you know it was just so so heavily weighted towards the Knuckle and Rouge levels. That, like they took me exponentially more. To, like a Sonic level at its longest would take me ten fifteen minutes. Yeah, and these could take me three times that. Yeah. Uh, so it just brought the game to a grinding halt. Uh, I'd be very curious to see what you would think of Sonic Heroes. Yeah, if there was an easy way to play it, I would probably have played it by now. It's called a GameCube emulator. Yeah, I know. I think we covered last time how much I am weirdly loath to play emulated GameCube games. Maybe that was a void life. I don't remember. It came up. It came up, but there's no, you just put it in and press play. It really is. It's not I know. I don't understand why. I just don't emulate 3D games very often. Yeah, that's fair enough. Fair enough. Um, but this game's incredible. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention, though we didn't mess with it for this, uh, the Chow Garden. Um where you you could throughout the game you can collect animals out of the robots in like little light can canisters which you can use to go to the chow garden and raise up chows which are the little virtual pets i guess they're not virtual little pets based on i guess they're tech they're technically like the baby form of the bot like the evil bad guy in sonic adventure right like they're just baby chaos that's why they're called yeah uh, everyone calls them chows even though it's i, I assume it's supposed to be cow I, I assume they're Chows, because everyone says Chows. I assume that just became true at a yeah. point, <laughs> through the sheer force of will. Uh, which is a really cool thing to mess with if you have the time and inclination and aren't playing games for a podcast. Uh, the ways in which the Chows can evolve into, like, devil and angel forms and stuff uh, is very cool. Um, and then you can do, like, mini games with them. Uh, the battle version could attach to Sonic Advance, and you could transfer your Chows over to the small screen and raise them up on your Game Boy, which was very neat. Yeah. Uh, not replicating anything anymore, obviously, which is a shame. Um, just mentioning that I have messed with that. It is fun back in the day. We didn't do it for this. Um, but it is a huge part of the fandom of this stuff is the introduction of Chow raising as, like, an aspect of Sonic that really hasn't come forward as far as I know. No, I don't think so. Yeah. It's just a shame because if you could just if Sonic could just raise his own Digimon, it'd be a better world. Uh they should cross over Sonic and Digimon. There's yep. more Digimon games than there are Sonic games these days. That's a tragedy. <laughs> what the hell happened to our planets? <laughs> yep. Well, uh the, the Space Colony Arc. <laughs> the Space Colony Arc, that's true. Chaos Control. Uh, chaos control is a cool phrase yeah shadow just shouting chaos control and then teleporting places is maybe the coolest thing that's ever happened i love it it just taps directly into <laughs> my teenage conception of what is cool remember when sonic and sonic shadow fight in the jungle and then they get a call from eggman being like you all have to leave because you're gonna blow up morons and then the entire island blows up yeah 
The game's good. The part where Sonic goes, I'm basically the same as Shadow. I'm also a hedgehog, so I should be able to do Chaos Control 2 as he looks at an emerald and, and then does Chaos Control. Very funny. And, and then they all argue, like, isn't that meant to be a fake emerald? And everyone's like, ah! He had an emerald shard with him, so it awoke the power of the fake emerald. Yeah. But so also, I guess I mean, but eight also emeralds it implies originally that Shadow can do that stuff because he's the ultimate life form. But if A, he's like a clone of Sonic, and two, Sonic can do it, does that mean Sonic is actually the ultimate life form? Well, he's not a clone of Sonic, he's just also a hedgehog. Yeah, but look at his design. He's definitely built to be like a clone well, of Sonic. Well, yes, but we have to assume that this is just what hedgehogs look like. <laughs> yeah, I haven't played Shadow the Hedgehog, the video game, so maybe this is addressed in that. Well, I know, I know he gets amnesia after, like the him that comes back in forces doesn't remember Sonic Adventure two. Yeah, I know that. I also know that Shadow is just him against Gun the entire game. So, okay, yeah. <laughs> All right, one day I will play. I I assume Shadow the Hedgehog is absolutely terrible, uh, but one day I'll play. I want to go to the alternate universe where Shadow the Hedgehog was like actually uh, T rated. Mm. Uh, it got so they they were gonna make it. And then they the E10 rating like was introduced and they cut a bunch of stuff from the game to make it not as grimdark, but it was still obviously like it didn't remove any of the grimdark, they just made it less funny. So I, Shadow doesn't say fuck anymore, basically. <laughs> That's a shame. Uh, which uh, stealing stealing so many good things from us. Yeah. And then Sonic had to fall in love with the human woman, but in a way worse way than Shadow, and ruin everything forever. <laughs> Uh, Shadow is much better at falling in love with a human woman than Sonic is. Yes. Also, she's like related to Eggman, but she just looks like a like awfully modeled like Disney princess, uh, not an Eggman. I wish she was just an egg girl. What if they yeah, made an egg like, girl? But Gerald looks like Eggman. Like they both look yeah, pretty Gerald, similar. Gerald looks like what if Doctor Wily had an Eggman face? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So the one thing we could do to improve this game is absolutely uh to make Maria <laughs> an eggman. An egg girl. Remember egg, when remember girl. when I think it was when Sonic Mania came out, there was like the sprite that people like interpreted as an egg girl and it was just like the cutest design. You're like, yes, I want this. Eggman and egg girl team up because Eggman's also cute. <laughs> What if that happened, but Shadow was in love with her? <laughs> uh, the part at the very end of the game during the credits where Eggman looks out the window and he's like, maybe the Earth is worth protecting after all. And, and Tails is like, and we did it together. <laughs> 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 These two people who literally 20 minutes ago were trying to kill each other. <laughs> That's true. In that very room. Yes. Because <laughs> the, the battle between Eggman and Tails is one of the dumbest levels in the whole game. <laughs> yes. Because you both just have mechs, so it's just a battle of attrition of who can shoot each other harder more. Yeah, but the, the the other person, the AI has like a little bit of a boost in the attacks they could do. So you've just kind of got to get lucky and attack them quick enough. Yes. The, the, the battle will not go longer than 20 seconds. No. If it goes longer than 20 seconds, you are dead. So you've no. just got to get in there and get it done. Yeah, because eventually the, the whoever you're against will be firing giant laser beams that you don't get. So. <laughs> yeah. But you both have the same health bar. Yeah. So like, if you just shoot uh, accurately enough, you win. Yeah, it's very dumb. <laughs> dumb game uh looking at video this is what like this wasn't a weird low budget game this no. was a big game from a first party yeah i mean uh, it was it was sonic uh team usa which is slightly you know it's a different team I than mean, like, like sonic team it, but it was sega at the end of the dreamcast era and it yes. was a different team and it, so was, i'm not like saying this is the peak of you know final fantasy 10 literally came out this year i'm not saying this is the yeah. peak of like I mean, development yeah, this is also the year which the dreamcast gave up the ghost because this game in japan came out on dreamcast and gamecube within the same year like this is when everything yeah. was shut down and here we go sonic's multi-platform now uh uh, so I'm not saying it's like the peak of you know video, but I do think this wasn't framed as this is a weird budget game. This isn't fucking Earth Defense Force, right? Yeah. Like, uh, and that just wouldn't happen. Now. You wouldn't get a game like this now. <laughs> no. Uh, the game industry has changed so much. Yeah, it's a uh, shame. Adding adding the necessity for infinite polish on every big video game has just ruined things. This is why Sonic's bad now. Yep, because the the Sonic Forces is more polished than this. Yeah. But because of that, it's like a ghost of a game. There's nothing there. Yeah, there's nothing there. It's it's like, you know, I, I enjoy it, but I understand why it's like loathed. Yeah. Uh, and it's just weird because you think of just how much money is in every just 
Look at God of War. Just an awful game. Abhorrent mess. It gives nothing to the universe. No. It took so many people, so many man hours, so like so much. The the like actual labor that goes into making something that is unthinkable. Uh, and they just get sad about video games. <laughs> yep. Uh, God of War probably had more UI designers than Sonic Forces had its entire development team. <laughs> so unquestionably. <laughs> Different worlds. Different mm. worlds. Uh, what we're saying is play Sonic Forces, play Sonic Adventure 2. They're both great. They're both good. Sonic's uh, just good. Sonic's good. I like Sonic a lot. Yeah. He's a friend. I mean, he goes it, fast. It, it, it's often very bad, but I still love him. I really need to watch Sonic X. <laughs> yeah, you do. Which apparently covers Ad- Adventure and Adventure 2's storyline. Um, yes. Which sounds outrageous to be done in an anime. <laughs> Ready to hear, live, and learn in an anime. Yep. Have to get used to Japanese Sonic voices because they recast like the the these voices from the video game are not the dub voices of the anime. So I don't want them. I just have to listen to the Japanese ones. Well, the weird the weird part is that that then like backfilled into the video games, and that eventually the video game cast became the Sonic X cast. That's why all these these actors got replaced. Oh, weird. Uh, but then all the Sonic actors have been replaced multiple times. I think that. I missed the last... Sonic gets replaced the least, but everyone, all the Sonic actors have been replaced multiple times. It's a shame. Uh, yeah, it is. It really is. Yeah. Sonic deserves the the love of... Respect him! It's one of the biggest video game franchises. We, we deserve a Ruse the Bat's terrible voice acting until the end of time. <laughs> we do! Uh, we deserve Shadow. He, Sonic's just a hedgehog that loves adventure. Yes. Yes, God, he does say that. <laughs> and Shadow's like, who are you? What is the meaning of our war? And he's like, I'm just a hedgehog that loves adventure. And I'm like, this is the plot of every Kingdom Hearts game, except oh. Woody Toy Story's there. Yep. And a regular Goku, that Sonic Hedgehog. Yep. Classic Goku, that. <laughs> he literally goes Super I guess Saiyan. he does go Super yes. Saiyan. <laughs> Yeah, so the game ends with them both going Super Saiyan as live and learn plays. Yep. So... What more do you want? <laughs> no, nothing. I can ask for nothing, nothing. else. If you want to ask us questions or comments about anything video game related, uh, especially what we're covering, but that's not necessary, you can send them to podcast at abnormalmapping.com. We have five emails. Uh, Jax, do you want to start us off? Yeah. Uh, our first email is uh, from uh, Eliam. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Could be pronouncing that wrong. Sorry if I am. Uh, who says uh, they are a massive Sonic fan uh, and often find themselves at odds with the popular conception of the franchise. Lots of oh, Sonic was always bad, corny, etc. I'm sure you're familiar. Not to say I brush away the franchise force. I can see that plenty of Sonic games are janky and poorly executed. Uh, it's rather I find that element to be additive. Uh, feels like I should specify no irony poison here. Uh, Sonic 06 would be a worse, less interesting game with greater polish and coherence, just as Sonic 3 would have crumbled and has, it been, has its design been less tight. Part of what is to me beautiful about Sonic is that he functions in and above uh, the muck in relatively equal measure. How does the breadth of Sonic objective quality affect your conception of the franchise, and how do you prefer your Sonic served? Well done or dangerously raw. <laughs> uh, anyhow, loving the cast as usual. Well, thank you very much for the compliments. Uh, I'm not going to read. Feel awkward reading those out, but thank you very much. <laughs> you can send them to us. We'll always read them. Uh, I, I want to say dangerously raw, but also I refuse to play Sonic 06, because I think it'd just make me sad, so I don't know if that's true. I would like I a, mean, so- a medium rare. Yeah, medium. Well, Sonic 06 has, like, Blur Studios cutscenes. Like, there's a level... It introduces a level of uh, polish into the disaster that is not as earnest as Machinima Tales going, the fake Emerald War! That's true. Uh, 
So, like, one day, maybe I will have to play Sonic 06 and give an actual answer to that part of this question. But in general, I like Sonic uh, not, like, hugely polished, but honest and rough. But I would like the gameplay to get more polished. I think it deserves it, because I think the ideas are actually much stronger than everyone gives them credit for. Uh, I think that the gameplay is good, and if they spent more time and would give them more money, it would be better. I, you know. Um, that's, I, you know, I, I don't think that the gameplay is improved by it being kind of, um, uh, you know, weird and unpolished. Yeah. Uh, I do think that the, like, I, I don't want it to become like all the interest interest to sound enough. Like I'm imagining the good version of this, where the money just lets the ideas sing, which is never what actually happens when you bring money in. No, but I do think that you can do a. It is theoretically possible to do a better, bigger version of Sonic with more money and, and uh, time. Yeah, but you don't want to accidentally make Mario Odyssey, but for Sonic. No, God no. <laughs> I, I want to make you know more generations, but with better levels and ideas. Sonic Adventure Three. Uh, people have been clamoring for that for so long. Do you think happen. that's what the next one's going to be called? No. No? No. You got the next question? Yeah, our next email is from Toffer, uh, who mentioned Sonic Adventure 2 was uh, their sister and their favorite game when they were kids, 10 to 12, um, and then had a resurgence of popularity with their friend group in high school um, because of the very bad multiplayer mode. And yes, it's a very bad multiplayer mode. We do not interface that at all. You can do kart racing, yeah. you can do like foot races. There's some chow multiplayer stuff, I think. Um, they also rent. They, this was a game they rented without owning a GameCube memory card. So if you lost all your lives, it would restart oh, no. you at the beginning of the story arc. Oh uh, no! Yes. Um, ah! <laughs> uh, they also mentioned this is the first game that drove them to Game FAQs for all the Chow stuff. Um, which, yep, me. Uh, I, I was already on Game FAQs because of Final Fantasy IX is what drove me to Game FAQs because of the terrible strategy guide. Um, but uh, getting all the uh, like Chow stuff and also getting all the uh, what I want emblems that you get because mm -hmm. uh, we didn't talk about it, but each level has like five emblems. And if you get all five emblems in every world, you unlock a special Green Hill Zone level that is terrible. It's not worth the effort that it takes to get all the emblems. Yes. Um, if you want to look at disappointment, go look at the Green Hill Zone in Saga Venture 2, this terrible, like, minute-long mess of nostalgia jammed into a framework that cannot support it. It's so bad. It's really funny, because that's how every 3D Sonic game opens after this. Yes. <laughs> Um, the thing that they did mention is that this is the first game that they had a not real, uh, secret spread by word of mouth when they were kids about like in the cannon's core final mission, if you jumped at a certain point during the giant water tunnel, you would get a secret Sonic upgrade. And they just did this over and over again, trying to get this upgrade that didn't <laughs> exist. Which, that is one of the cool bits of growing up with video games. It just doesn't exist anymore. No, the internet killed it. Yeah. It's a real shame, honestly. <laughs> Because I remember messing around with Mario 64 a bunch trying to figure out what the trick was with the statue and Ella's Real 64 nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Nothing. The answer is nothing. It's all a lie. Yep. You could have no mystery anymore, which is fine. It's fine. It's fine to lose that, but, you know, yep. it's fine. Uh, we have a question here from Nora. Mm -hmm. Our friend Nora has written it. Uh, saying that Sonic has always been a thing I didn't care at all about, but in this post Kingdom Hearts existence, they're making another one, Nora. Uh, I, I find myself in. Uh, I realize that I would probably like it a lot uh, if it weren't tethered to games I have zero interest in playing. Do you have any stories or world that you know you'd probably be interesting, but will never really dig into because of their mediums? Um, I mean, I keep I keep trying to get into Kingdom Hearts, and it doesn't take. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, you aren't adjacent to Kingdom Hearts. That's not because of the mediums. I um, I mean, I keep bouncing off of like DC Comics, which is a thing I love, despite oh. hating comic books. That's yeah, probably that's, the closest that's... to the answer I have here. That's quite the. Other. I'm trying to think of one. Um, like I guess like strategy RPGs maybe, but I can't think of one that would be. I'm keeping up with to Digimon in tomorrow. 2019, Jackson Tyler. <laughs> Uh, you like Kyrie. Digimon on paper a lot. I don't think you've successfully completed watching or playing a Digimon thing since you were a child. Well, I know I, I I got interrupted by my exams when I was playing Cyber Sleuth. Yeah, but you haven't finished Try. You aren't keeping. You haven't watched like the more recent shows, have you? I thought you fell off at some point. 
Well, it's because the shows aren't necessarily good anymore. <laughs> the, like, Digimon's it's, not... <laughs> look, Digimon isn't good 100% fan, of the time. Fake fan, fake fan. <laughs> I will fight you. If you are going to neg me into watching Applemon Digital Monsters... Do you like where the Digimon Digimon's more than app, Mario? Do I like Digimon more than Mario? Yes. Oh, I hate you. I hate you. Because <laughs> the answer is unquestionably yes, but that's patently ludicrous. As you walk into the trap of, well, you finished every Mario game. As I finished all the Mario games, and I think some of them were incredible, but it's not Digimon. It's not Digimon. <laughs> exactly. Come on now. So what I'm saying is that you need to step it up if you want to be a Digimon fan. <laughs> One of the Digidestined. If, if you will. Yes. <laughs> I hate you so much. <laughs> we have one more email here. We have no, two we emails. Have two. I have one from Adam. Uh, this was uh, his Sonic first Sonic uh, game, 3D Sonic game that they played on GameCube at 10 or 11. Everyone played this game on the GameCube like me, just did it f- six years earlier, which makes me feel a little old. Um, they haven't gone back in over a decade. Uh, they remember it being a mess, but one that they're really positive on. Hey, me too. Um, to this day, I continue hoping that Sega will announce Sonic Adventure 3, despite knowing this particular format of Sonic games probably died at Sonic 06. Um, you know, I think that Forces is a pretty good one of these. Uh, you know, it's, well, it does, it's, it doesn't right have there. any overwhelms. Yeah, no, I, I guess know. this, this, this doesn't have, have any no, stuff. because the thing everyone yelled about in Sonic Adventure was the terrible fucking overworld. <laughs> yep. Um, so some questions of the three main stage types, which do you think was most need of improvement and what would you do to improve it? Um, the answer is I mean, treasure hunting. Tre- but I don't treasure know hunting, and I would, it. I would shoot it in the head. Like I would get rid of it. I, I like it in principle. I just don't know how you do that in a way that's like interesting because it would like the fundamental nature of a treasure hunt is uninteresting, right? So I guess on some level yeah. you make them puzzle levels instead, but then that's still confusing and bad because the the levels make it confusing and bad. Because right, like, the immediate obvious one is to make the scanner better, but then it's just literally follow a waypoint and win. What you need to do is have Knuckles and Ruse land on an island where they have to use their digging and gliding skills to build a like, fort to live in. I just want Sonic Minecraft. Uh, yeah. Uh, they can be the ones who interface with the Child Garden. Um, next question, which I, we can't really answer, is would you consider playing a standalone version of the Child Garden? Um, no. But also, no, we didn't really mess it. I mean, to be fair, we had the option and we didn't. So the answer is no. We did not consider uh, that. Favorite song off the soundtrack? Oh, come on. I can't make the... I can't choose between my children. You know, make me choose between Escape the Sin City and Live and Learn. <laughs> yeah, that's, that is what the answer comes down to, absolutely. Uh, oh, I think Escape from the City beats Live and Learn. But like, I, only I, just. I, only I just. Think, I think it's Live and Learn for me. I'm glad that we, I, this is the right way. Is one of us picks one and the other one picks the other. The thing, so the thing about live and learn is that the actual verses are also hilarious. <laughs> uh, the, well, the, the thing about live and learn is that the chorus is kind of weak. Yes, but the uh, verses, but the verses are amazing. oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know what? I don't know. Okay, look, it's a close one. <laughs> Yep. And then we have one more question, which were tweeted in, which we normally don't take, but they were emailed in also. So I will, I will read them. Uh, you have followed instructions. <laughs> <laughs> um, the questions uh, from Ian are: When do you think Sonic works as a character? Or when does that break down? I think I don't think there's any Sonic thing that I think Sonic is bad in as a character. I think Sonic's yeah, pretty being a mascot character. Like where we're not in the '90s anymore, so like the attitude doesn't really. Re- play like uh, sonic is not cool he's like nerdy and earnest in a way that's good i think he could fit in whatever he does i wish the olympic games were better so i could just play those i mean like sonic as right as a goku as the he's the nice boy in the middle of all this nonsense is like that's just what he is and that's a a lot of video game characters in a lot of genres and i think it's fine he's fairly uh um versatile yeah uh the next question which i think we already answered is just the power of friendship what is the sonic franchise about as a narrative and absolutely power friendship it's fist bump fist bump is actually what sonic is about Sonic is absolutely about the fist bump which is why it's an incredible song and i understand like if you if you're a big old sonic fan it's about the you know the clash between nature and machine uh but that that kind of goes away as you are teaming up with the president yeah (laughs) like 
you could say the the original games were about that, but that that is, that is not what Sonic as a whole is about. It's yeah. I mean, I just friendship. don't think of like Sonic in his entirety as like grinding rails, chili dog eating Sonic as like an eco friendly character. Like he's not a character that's about like we live in nature with our animal friends. Like he's a cool dude. He's gonna skateboard down San Francisco streets. Yeah, but like Sonic began with every level would end with you freeing all the animals. From yeah, the like, yeah. No, like I that... under I understand how this happened. I just because I didn't grow up with those, and I grew up with mm-hmm. and like I played this one first. <laughs> with this? Like this is what yes. Sonic is to me. No, <laughs> yeah, it's valid. Um, and then how much of Bayonetta is in Sonic Adventure Two? Bayonetta One specifically, and honestly, I think like tonally, Bayonetta in many ways is just the Sonic of her world. Her world is just nonsense, devil angel battles, right? <laughs> Oh, yep. I mean, I would say, like, not a huge amount, but enough. Like, Bayonetta's never going to the president, right? Yeah, like, no, but Bayonetta... there's something, there's some, the ways in which she interacts with, like, um, Enzo and Rodan remind me so much of, like, the way in which Sonic interacts with his friends. In, like, a more, right. like, mature way, and, like, the jokes are much more like, we're doing comedy here. But there's, like, a weirdness of, like, these these friends who have nothing in common other than they're all going to unite, and only one of them is actually matters. Like, only Sonic <laughs> matters. Only Bayonetta well, matters. I guess that's true. The, the only Sonic has... Sonic's the only one who can actually go fast. Yes. He's the only one who can go fast. Friendship. Eventually he's going to turn golden and win the day. That's just what happens. Goku must turn Super Saiyan. Yep. This is inevitable. Yep. Also, there's totally a, a whole sequences of Bayonetta that just turn into different games for no good reason uh, because it's cool. I mean, Bayonetta literally has a bit that's after Banner. Yep. And one that's like, hang on, it's good. Bayonetta, and good. Bayonetta collects rings. Yep. Just wait. Next year, game of the year, Bayonetta 3. I don't care what else comes out. So I'm glad that Nintendo let them kept the rings, kept the halos. Yes. Did, I don't, does it still do the sound effect? I don't know. I don't remember. They got rid of Angel Attack, which that was a positive for everyone. It's all that I care about. (laughs) (laughs) That's true. I guess those are the questions. Yeah, those are the questions. Uh, Thank you, everyone, for sending them in. Uh, Feel free to send in future ones. Again, podcast at abnormalmapping.com. Very easy to remember. Um, Next month, we are going to continue to play old games as we dig into one that neither of us has played. We are playing ActRaiser, which is a SNES game. Um, That's made by Square Enix, right? I do believe so. I didn't look it up. Uh, I've never played this despite growing up with the SNES because um, I was a little child and I didn't like games that looked that it intense. It is by Enix specifically. Yeah, yeah. You know, Square Enix. Um, you, you can <laughs> find this... that about 90s games. I, I, I think at some point it was on the Virtual Console if you downloaded it before they shut that off. So if you have an emulator, you can play ActRaiser. It might be on the SNES Classic. I don't know. I don't care. I didn't look it up. I'm going to play this on an emulator. <laughs> It's 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 not on it's not on the Wii. It's not on any virtual store. It was on mobile phone in Europe in two thousand and four. <laughs> so like actual mobile phone. Yeah, like actual mobile phones, and only in Europe in two thousand and four. That's the only other release. All right. Well, we're going to so, be playing download some emulators. So look forward to that. And I think that's everything, Jackson. Where can people find our good podcasts? People can find our good podcast at abnormalmapping dot com. We have a whole bunch there. Uh, including the repertory screening, which is our movie podcast. I'm enjoying d- doing a lot. Uh, if you like, if you like us talking about video games, you might also like us talking about movies. Uh, uh, on that one, so it's a good yeah, time. you can go to uh, uh, repertoryscreenings.com for that. Um, we also have. I don't know if this went up last before the last episode or not. We have a uh, actual RSS feed for your uncle's beach house, which is our side anime podcast, which you can just look in any uh, podcatcher of choice and get. Um, which is us doing shows that are not Gundam because our main podcast at this point is the great Gundam project, which you can get on Patreon and help support the network, including this show at patreon.com slash normal mapping for $1 a month. You get uh, us talking about Gundam every week, two episodes of that, two episodes of a backup show right now. It's Macross. Um, and it's a really good time. Uh, it's a great podcast. Obviously, it comes out every week, so it's a little different than this one, but um, we try to bring similar energy, deep reads, good we times. Do. Fun interactions between good friends. <laughs> it's, not our, it's not a good podcast. We're not good friends. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, look, uh, please listen to that if you have any interest in anime. Uh, even if you don't like Mecha, there's probably something in Beach House that's interesting to you. If you're yes. watching Ava because of all the Ava discourse and you've listened to Waypoint uh, and you've listened to Dan Reichert, you can listen to us talk about Ava. We did it in 2018 before the Netflix thing was even announced. We didn't know it was coming. 
Yeah, we just threw our hands in the ring before we knew it was going to be a big thing. So if you want to, it's good because if we had known, we never would have done it. We ne- never, no, never would have done it. But then we we got it out of the way. Uh, so that's everything. Uh, again, come back next month. We'll be talking about ActRaiser and look forward to future games on our road to episode 100, where I have to suffer bad video games for Jackson. Are you mean Halo? <laughs>